Why do we create? What drives us to transform empty spaces into places of meaning and connection? Experiences are what this is all about, really. When the experience becomes the emotion, or the emotion becomes the experience. I am Lou, and I began DPS with the hope that it would be a year of invaluable opportunities for growth, whether as a designer or as an individual. Over the past few months, I became a drastically different person, but realistically, I became myself. I found my purpose in design, and so on. I would say I have learned in mainly three different ways. Learn through introspection, learn through research, and learn from professional experiences. As I started the journey of DPS and the development of my self-initiated project, I was also in a phase of deep introspection. I wanted to understand the origins of my thoughts, to comprehend my mechanisms, and why they work the way they do. All of this was part of a wider exploration of my designer identity. Who am I? Who do I want to become? I had already touched on the answers to these questions when I was asked to write a personal design manifesto during my art foundation year. I remember vividly that my baseline for this was designing for the people. The reason why I was so drawn to spatial design in the first place was because people are experiencing it. The dynamic between people, feelings, spaces is and has always been to some extent at the heart of my interest. Also, rediscovering my fine arts practice earlier in this year allowed me to think about my design practice in a more liberated way and kept pushing me into that direction of connections and dynamics. For my SIP specifically, I am looking at the theme of human connections and offline interactions in a micro-architecture or pavilion-like setting. Getting to this brief, a brief that I truly resonated with, was not easy. I faced a huge creative block because I found myself overwhelmed by the infinity of potential options. So I just started to research. Research about spaces and people, about dynamics in general, and even about choice. Choice in the context of architecture. And within this whole struggle of trying to pinpoint what I wanted to develop, lies the importance of choice. Choice in human nature. René Dubos, for example, described in So Human, So Animal that being able to pick from different options for actions might just be one of the most crucial human qualities. And Jean-Paul Sartre in Being in Nothingness says, action is the essence of freedom. Reading about the theory of choice motivated a genuine re-evaluation of my approach to developing a brief and was at the same time inspiring the creation of physical aspects in my final design. Through this, DPS has allowed me to relearn to learn, to find what process methods were the most effective, to discover a true passion in researching the themes I am passionate about. I finally understood what works and what doesn't, what works and why it does. My design process was then improved from finding out how my inner mechanisms work. When it came to experiencing the design process professionally, my workflow was improved from finding out the inner mechanisms of the industry. People do not have time, go straight to the point. This phrase was like a guideline for most of my experiences. The feedback I received from professionals and the insight I gained from exploring the industry acted as the catalyst for the development of my ways of working. There are five main investigation axes I can pinpoint. One, working for a client as opposed to a theoretical course brief. Two, producing work under various constraints such as time management, budget restrictions and communication within a group. Three, 
improving and building upon my existing skills and technical knowledge to meet the industry standards. Four, developing clear understanding of my preferences for a design career. And five, understanding the value of my skills and my work. My journey through the self-initiative project and DPS marked a significant shift in my vision of design for branded spaces and spatial design in general. It has led me to a deeper comprehension of my own motivations and preferences within design. I went from questioning practically every aspect of my practice and design identity to being able to entangle my existential uncertainties, all through professional insight and the development of projects. After going through self-examination, self-analysis or even self-evaluation, my potential thesis question has drastically evolved. My manifesto, however, hasn't shifted considerably over the past year. It was rather reinforced, solidifying my conviction that it is what I want to research, what I want to develop my practice around. Perhaps now I can provide responses to what does it take to exist in this wide design world. I would probably reference what my tutor Ansel Nichols mentioned in a session. Be confident, be bold, be brave. To me it is, be confident in yourself and your potential. Be bold in your actions and don't be scared to shoot your shot. And be brave to face the potential challenges and setbacks you might come across. Finding the ways I want to exist as a designer is not about losing a sense of freedom. It is about actively choosing the path that I want to follow.